We are now living in a socialist paradise. No, really. Industries are closing down. Capitalism is being replaced by Trump bucks, Trudeau bucks, Boris bucks. We're living simpler lives, less travel, way fewer carbon emissions. Governments are nationalizing and taking over everything. This is what the far left has been advocating for, for years. How do you like it? How does it feel that you can no longer freely consent to enter into employment with somebody, to negotiate for a wage in a field you're interested in, and instead you simply have to stay home and take what you're given? How does it feel that you can no longer go outside? That those roads, those parks, those schools and libraries that you pay tax money for, you can no longer use? How does it feel with all private business shut down? Because the state has decided that free people can no longer engage in commerce. How do you like the socialist paradise? This is a document that Naomi's been given by her workplace that basically identifies her as an essential worker. She works at a grocery store. Canada is not yet at the level where we're checking people's papers, but various essential businesses have been giving these out anyway, just in case. Some countries are a lot worse with it. Here's one from France. It basically says that in order to leave your house, you have to fill this out and give it to the police. It outlines who you are, where you live, and where you're going. Here's Italy's form, pretty much the same thing. What kind of free society asks you for your papers just so you can travel? It's not just papers, though. Westwood Bar boarded up by police after continuing to serve food and drinks indoors. I mean, it's stupid, but what's the problem? It's people's choice. If idiots want to go there and get sick, isn't that their prerogative? Isn't it on the individual to be responsible and manage their own life? On Monday night, Queen City Lounge had 40 customers inside drinking and eating from a full buffet. On Tuesday afternoon, several arrests later, police boarded the place up. The Westwood Bar had continued to operate as usual despite Ohio Governor Mike DeWine's order that all restaurants and bars in the state of Ohio end their dine-in services to prevent the spread of coronavirus. It was more than a risk to patrons, the police chief added. Now you're putting first responders at risk because we get the information that they're open. There's 40 plus people inside. Who knows who may have already come into contact with coronavirus, and now our first responders are having to interact with those folks. It wasn't the first warning the Queen City Lounge had received. It pains us to have to do this. It pains us that we are in these uncharted waters. This is new territory for your police department. What new territory? Being authoritarians? But yes, I agree with you. It's stupid that they're still open. It's stupid that people are congregating there. But are you actually saying that people don't have the right to be stupid? It's not good for them to be stupid, but should the government prevent them from being? Is safety a more important value than freedom? Is that where we are now? Well, this is where that kind of thinking goes. Rhode Island police to hunt down New Yorkers seeking refuge. Cars are stopped, homes to be checked to enforce quarantines. Officers halt cars on the interstate to start the crackdown. What's going on here is that the state of New York is seriously suffering from coronavirus, far worse than most of the rest of the United States. And so, people who have a New York license plate on their vehicles but are driving to Rhode Island to get away from it are going to be rounded up by the Rhode Island police. This is the type of totalitarian nightmare you get when safety is a higher virtue than freedom. The state can justify violating all sorts of rights if it views it to be in the person's best interest. And if the state's view of what your best interest is comes into conflict with your right of self-determination, well, fuck you then. Yesterday, I announced, and today I reiterated, Anyone coming to Rhode Island in any way from New York must be quarantined, the governor said. By order, will be enforced, enforceable by law. She signed an executive order Thursday that applies to anyone who has been in New York during the past two weeks and through at least April 25th. National Guard members will be stationed at the TF Green Airport, Amtrak train stations, and at bus stops. The citizen soldiers will be following up with people at local residences. The maximum penalty for not complying is a fine of $500 and 90 days in prison. The American Civil Liberties Union blasted the new rules, objecting to the collection of the motorist contact information in particular. While the governor may have the power to suspend some state laws and regulations to address this medical emergency, she cannot suspend the Constitution. Under the Fourth Amendment, having a New York State license plate simply does not, and cannot, constitute probable cause to allow police to stop a car and interrogate the driver no matter how laudable the goal of the stop may be. And they're absolutely right. The ACLU has been kind of hit and miss recently, but this is absolutely the case. People's natural rights do not vanish just because of an emergency. And you can tell exactly which politicians have always been authoritarians in waiting, based on how they're responding to this crisis. Speaking of citizen soldiers, this would not be a complete video if we didn't watch all the various snitches that are floating around right now. 
Let's check it out. Your ass yeah. is grass. Right. Do you understand? Right. And if you I'm done with this shit. So be looking out for those cops. All right, I will. I'll be looking out for those cops. Sheltered in place. Go ahead, put me on social media. You're a little pup. Seriously? Seriously, I called the cops. I can't. Wow. Okay. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> Shouldn't she be social distancing from them? They closed the window on her, dude. She's spitting all over the place. Like, seriously, what's going on here? The, the road is empty. These are just two kids driving around in the car. They're not doing anything. They're not exposing anybody to coronavirus. Like, they, they leave their house, they hop in the car, they drive around, they, they go back to their house, they go back inside. Just to get, just to get the fuck out for a minute or two. And you have these moral busybodies who just can't wait to get you in trouble because they have nothing else going on in their pathetic lives. This one looks like it's from the UK, just based on the signs and what they're wearing and some of the stuff that's, uh, that's on the road. But we'll see. Hi guys. Hello. Do you work for the NHS? Uh, no. Who do you work for? For community fiber. So what are you laying? Uh, fiber. Fiber? What kind of fiber? Fiber optic, 5G ones. But you're not supposed to be within two meters of each other and you're supposed to be uh, essential is this essential work uh, i think so i don't know he just sent me to do the job i just can't. dude they're laying 5g fiber optic cable they're causing the coronavirus i understand it's not essential and you don't work for the nhs so why are you doing it does it not negate the government's guidelines yeah, going to make a complaint. who do i complain to who's, who's your boss uh, I have a number for the courtesy board, where is the white van and the red barrier in front to call. But do you know what you're doing now? You're laying 5G? Yeah. You realise that, don't you? Yeah? Yeah. So, you know that kills people? <laughs> you know, I said that as a joke. I didn't know she was actually going to go there. If they turn this on, it's going to kill everyone, and that's why they're building the hospitals? Yeah, but every, How do you every... feel? Do you have children? Uh, no, I'm young. Do you have parents? Uh, uh, just, you're... just my mum. Well, how do you feel that when you when they turn that switch on, bye bye, mama? Holy shit, lady! Like, let him get on with his fucking work, dude. If you want to complain, call his head office. Like, okay, I I've done this kind of work before. Not not laying five G, obviously, but you know this kind of you're you're out in the streets and you're doing like public service work. And we were always told, listen, if someone has a complaint about the the laborers' work, they call the head office. You know, they call the town hall. They call the public works office. Uh, they don't try to get us to stop it. Because even though our salaries were funded by taxes, an individual member of the public doesn't have the right to liaison directly with an individual worker. That's not how the system works. There are ways you can complain and change things, but not by harassing a low-level worker. We'll all be in hospital with, um, on breathing apparatus. Why do you think they're building 25,000 sort of, um, concentration camps of death? Our hospital's concentration camps now. Holy shit, they called those camps at the border concentration camps. I'm pretty sure that they were places to detain people before they deport them, not places that they put people to keep them in. They were throwing them out. But listen, like, just because the state has to put people somewhere because of some reason, many of which are legitimate, doesn't mean that it's a concentration camp. Video, Americans being forced to take the coronavirus test. This can't be good. Please leave me alone. They can give you a shot right here on the chair. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone, bro. Not until you get on the bed. I'm not getting Damn. on the bed. Man, help me out, bro. It doesn't work like that, bro. I'm, can I? Anybody know a lawyer, bro? Somebody send me a lawyer. Come on, I, come bro, on, bro, bro on. no. Come on, James. It don't work like that, man. On, man. This shit ain't right, man. Nah, don't put the phone down now, motherfucker. Now, bro, we, bro, leave me alone. I don't want no need in my arm. It don't work like that. No, it does not work like that, bro. No, no, y'all need to change mental health and awareness, mental health and help. All that, man. Man, no, no, man. Come on, man. Man, bro, no. The time, the time is now. The time is now. No. I'm not on drugs, none of that, bro. I'm, I'm sane. Man, try, I'm a sane man. man. Y'all the ones that's crazy. Come on, James. Y'all the ones that's crazy, bro. Come on, come on, come on, man. No. Come no. Come on. Uh -uh. Come no. On, come on. Bro, get, get your James. motherfucking hands off me, bro. You don't work like that, bro. I'm going to tear this bitch off. Nigga, on my mama, nigga. Yeah, but nobody wants to do that. Get off me. Come on, James. Get off me, bro. You don't work like that. I'm not crazy. You crazy, white man. 
Leave me alone, bro. You were crazy. Yeah, you did. I took you were maybe afraid. I understand. I'm not scared of nothing, bro. I'm not scared of that, bro. Please leave me the fuck alone, bro. Don't work like that, bro. Holy shit. Yeah, we can abuse. Wait, right here. Jay, come on. Come on, bro. Oh, oh, stop. Stop. Relax. Relax. Hey, hey, stop. You're choking me. You're choking me. Choking me. You're choking me, bro. Stop. You're choking me, bro. Uh-uh. Stop. Stop. Help! Stop. Help, man. This shit ain't right, bro. Stop. 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 Now, y'all already know what's happening. Y'all put that in the motion. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, so I understand the necessity of testing people for a a novel new disease, but it's it's my understanding that not only human rights but medical ethics dictate that until someone falls unconscious. If they are re actively refusing treatment, you can't treat them? This seems wildly unethical. Like, y you always hear about people who, like, they're they're overdosing on drugs, and they're like, no, man, I don't want treatment, I just want to die. And and the paramedics are there, and they have to wait for the person to, to fall unconscious before they can start treating them, because they are explicitly not consenting. But these people, they just don't fucking care. It's disgusting. I've seen this one a few times, but check this shit out, guys. This is some uh, some South American country. They have squads of people in hazmat suits running around, just chasing down anyone they see uh, in public. Yep, y y if you catch somebody, you you lock them up. I think this video is from uh, Massachusetts. A church here is doing a drive-in method of holding services. The idea being that I guess they they all sit in their cars and they give the service. I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. Look at this, y'all. All these we they 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 heard through the grapevine we're having service at six thirty, and there's more police cars at a church service. Yes, this is King James Bible Baptist Church where Pastor Hamilton, where I'm the pastor of the church at. This is America, private property of a church. Look at this, y'all. It's more it's more police pulling up. Ain't they ain't done? Yes, sir. I got I got I got a letter from my lawyer too. You want you want you want to read my letter from my lawyer? Okay, I'm good. I don't need. I got that. I know. I know about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're gonna, we're gonna get tickets. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. And we'll allow the. If you do have members come, we will allow them to leave before they're cited. Yes, sir. If they decide not to, is when they will be just. Yes, sir. No right. No, the government. Yeah. Our right don't come from authority. It comes from the live Bible. So the authority does not have the, the right over the, the Constitution. We're talking about the Constitution law. The first, second amendment, the U.S. Constitution that was given to us by our forefathers. Pre Tate Reed can't give it, take it away. Mayor Eric Simmons can't take it away, nor the police officers. It, it can't. Not a military, the military. No, it can't. Hey, look at this, y'all. I'm a good citizen here. I don't sell drugs. Look at the police. I'm, I ain't, at least I'm just a pastor. I got police officers here, y'all, like I'm committing, like I'm robbing or I kill somebody. This is what you, they don't have this when a murder is in Greenville, y'all. Listen to these fucking pigs, dude. Your rights are suspended. Yeah, bullshit they are. Natural rights can never be suspended. And the American Constitution is not suspended because of a pandemic. Multiple pandemics have happened throughout American history. The Constitution was never suspended. There is no mechanism by which it can be suspended in that way for that reason. Fuck these power-hungry tyrants. Here's one from Philadelphia. This man's crime was not wearing a mask on a bus. That's it. He wasn't causing a scene. He wasn't coughing in anyone's face. He wasn't spitting on him. He was just sitting there without a mask. Wouldn't it have been easier just to just give him a mask? If you do not have a mask, you cannot ride public transportation, sir. 
Sir, you have to get off the bus, you have to get off the bus. Sir, sir. Fuck you. You pay your taxes, you pay that fare, you're fucking entitled to it. He was throwing people off who, like, they couldn't afford masks or couldn't find them, obviously. They were wearing bandanas, they were putting stuff around their mouth, they were doing whatever they could. And this guy's just a little fucking weasel. If you really want to know how these people think, all you have to do is look at this short exchange. We are aware of the reopened North Carolina protest that is occurring in downtown Raleigh on Wilmington and Jones Street and are monitoring the situation. The protesters are in violation of the governor's executive order and have been asked to leave. What part of the governor's order was violated here? Protesting is a non-essential activity. Protesting is the most essential activity. The people have an inalienable right to petition the government for a redress of their grievances. This does not go away just because there's an emergency. It is you, corrupt little shits, that are non-essential. It's not just America having this problem, obviously. And it comes as a man was charged in Sydney after going for a swim at Bondi Beach, seen being pinned to the ground by police. The 54-year-old man allegedly ignored signs that the beach was closed, entering a sectioned-off area. I didn't break any law, I didn't climb any fences, I didn't do anything at all. I was, I had to swim, I had to swim off the rocks, that police can do something to absolutely model citizen, law-abiding citizen, who never had treat me like absolute animal. Some eastern suburbs beaches will reopen today for exercise, including Coogee, Maroubra and Clavelli, but sunbathing is still banned. Look at that beach, dude. There's no one there. Like, if you show up, and you, you, know, you, you flaunt the rules a little bit, you take a dip. Are, are, are you spreading coronavirus? Are you poisoning the ocean with it or something? If people social distance at the beach, if they social distance while sunbathing or whatever, then whose business is it? This one's from the UK. I already know it's gonna be crazy. I'm picking up plant at the same time. Well, you were stood, I wasn't stood here or come out because you was, I come out because you were stood there saying, talking about, is this needed and all that? That's why I come out. No way. Give me a ticket for what? You're a bored guy. You're gonna give me details, I'll just lock you up. Lock me up for what? Breaking COVID guidelines. Keep, keep, keep it to your minister, please, bro. Put your hands on your head. Am I being threatened? Am I being threatened? Turn it around. Turn it around. You got a bored, lazy police officer just harassing people for the sheer fucking fun of it. Here's where things start to get crazy. This guy's getting harassed for walking his dog. The police just stroll up and ask him for his papers. Look at me when I'm around the chat leaves, it's a bit rude, isn't it? Come on, I'm trying to educate you here and you're just looking at your phone, all right? Yeah, yeah, well I see- I don't want to find you 60 pounds, well, I'm I, making my way around Denver. Well, I, well, I, well, I seen you- Educate you, like it's the state's place to tell you what to fucking think. You, yeah. When I seen you lot walking around in a group just then, walking all together, none of your masks, you're all stood within six what foot of me. You you're all within six, you're all within six. It's not his job to buy you a mask. That's your job. In fact, you have a job still. This guy probably doesn't have one. Right? Okay. okay. So, so why don't you practice film? what you preach? Yeah, I know. You should be filming anyway. You should be filming anyway. Don't put it on YouTube because my identity is not allowed on YouTube. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, if you want to cross the ocean and try to get me to take the video down, go right the fuck ahead, lady. Isn't it? 2297. Yeah. What's your name, please? Sainsbury. Thank you. Yeah. What's I'll put your it... name, please? I'm not going to give it to you, my friend. No, I don't. Look at this. He just didn't want to interact with her. And so she's going to be like, oh, nope, now you have to tell me everything about you, even though there's no fucking probable cause. Well, you're, 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 you had your dogs not on the lead just then. Come on. Come here. Come here. What's that? Well, who are those dogs? Are yours? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Day-to-day business is banned. 
Well, right. I, I don't care. You walk Listen, around with dogs, not on a leash. You walk around with dogs on a leash. I don't right. care what you're going to need to do. All right? Don't you, have you, such a bad attitude, okay? Just for your safety. You're going to have to arrest me. For what? Exactly. For what? For what? For what? Exactly. You'll have to arrest me. Yeah, this is how you do it, man. This is how you deal with it. Maybe not necessarily as combative as this guy if you're in the States, but you definitely politely but firmly exercise your rights. Don't consent to talking to the cops, guys. If they're gonna arrest you, they're gonna arrest you, and you can argue it later. Listen to the police. You walk up to me without masks, and you walk up, and you're, you're within six foot of each other, and you're within six foot of me. Practice what you preach. I'm not within six foot of anyone. You came to me. You came to me. Does it matter? And my dog with me. My dog's exercising. My dog's running around. I'm not going home. I'm exercising. Well, make your hour then, because that's all you get. Make your hour. Are we, are we living in Nazi Germany or something? No, we're not. It's a government-led guideline. And it's a guideline. Guideline. You just said the words. Guideline. It's a fucking guideline, dude. Like, she has the actual authority to tell him how long he can stay outside. Fuck you. Please don't step any closer towards me. Please don't step any... Look, look at this. Look at this now. Look, look how close she's getting. Look how close she's getting. Yeah, now stay where you are. On your way. I'm exercising my dog. Well, why didn't you do your job? People like you don't listen. What do you mean? I'm walking my dog. No, you were. You were lying on the ground. My dog was, my dog was running around me. And then you came up, you come up without masks, within three foot of each other, within three foot of me. Exactly. Practice what you preach. I don't sunbathe. That's breaking the law. What's breaking the law? Sunbathing. Sunbathing, yeah, all right. Look, look, look how covered I am. Sunbathing. I've got a hoodie. <laughs> She's reaching now. She just wants to fuck this guy somehow. She claims he's sunbathing when he's wearing a hoodie. But still, you know what? If you're social distancing and you decide to sunbathe, whose fucking business is that? Christ, man. Yeah, have a word for yourself. A guideline is something that the government wants the people to do, thinks it would be in their best interest to do. But that's not because there'll be punishments from the state if they don't do it. It's because it's a good idea for themselves. The police are not meant to enforce guidelines. They're meant to enforce the law. Oh, hey, you want to watch him kick down random people's doors to see if there's parties going on? Guys, listen to us. Hello? We've got a call, haven't we? Because we've got to come, otherwise, right. we've got to, there might be something going on here, so... <laughs> right. We need to double-check. I appreciate what, what you're you saying want? about social distancing, so I'm keeping yeah. the distance. Yeah, fuck off. Right, so we need to check the room to make no, sure no, nothing's no, going on. No, 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 stay name? away from me. What's your name? Don't matter. What are you doing in my house? What are you doing in my house? I have just explained to you. What are you doing in my house? I've just explained to you why we're here. We've had a call that was a disturbance, so that's why we're here. What, so you kicked me door in? Should you have opened the you, door? No. So they kicked this guy's door down because they think there's a party going on, and now they're just going to search his house. This is unironically some fascist shit. I know that that, that term's kind of been diluted recently because on the radical left side of things, they call everything that's not them a fascist. But the police ignoring people's property rights and simply walking around like they own the place all the time, public or private land, doesn't matter. Yeah, that's pretty fascist. I'm gonna explain that to you. No, I told you why I wouldn't open the door is because of what is going around this virus right. now. Fuck off right. and get out of here. One time size Look at you. You Every might have it. Fucking no. One time size bag. Everything's all right. Go away. Come on. Get in here, dickhead. Go on, have a look. Just check it. Have a look, dickhead! All right. See, you probably shouldn't have said, have a look, dickhead. That can be construed as uh, giving consent after the fact. He should be objecting this whole fucking time. But yeah, like, he refused to open the door. They broke down the door. Jesus. There's no probable cause for this. There's no fucking warrant. Yeah. Yeah. No going on in here, is there? So what you mean putting me door through for then? Fucking do one! You fucking pathetic! Get out of here! You absolute disgrace! And you got all else to do? You put my fucking door through? I hope you're gonna fucking. What are you gonna fucking do to that? Oh, shut your fucking mouth, you fucking brain dead cunt! Get out! Holy shit, dude! 
I, I get it. I get why he's mad. It's legitimate, but it's just kind of funny to hear. Fucking paid, what, 20 grand a year to be a fucking knobhead? Fuck off. Get out. Am I fucking out? Get the fuck out. What are you? Bye. Bye. Fucking idiots. Broke me fucking door. Look at the fucking state of this. Huh? British fucking police! Look at the fucking state of it! You fucking knobheads! Fuck my life! Holy shit, dude. Yeah, they, they, they totaled his door. He can't close it now. He can't lock it now. Now he's gonna get robbed. Oh, and by the way, some places have publicly said that, that they, they just don't have the manpower to, uh, to stop robberies anymore, so if, you, if someone's robbing you and you call the police, they just can't show up. Great time to leave somebody with no fucking door, then! Big Tech's doing their part, too. Landing AI has developed a tool that ensures people keep their social distance. The green blocks are people who have kept social distance, and the red blocks are people who aren't. And you can see on the bird's eye view where the red blocks are, uh, are too close to some people. Thanks, Big Tech! Now the police can just monitor every street and give everyone tickets all the fucking time. Google's getting in on it too. Google's sharing Canadians' location data with the government, but says the privacy is assured. How is the privacy assured if you're sharing it with the government? It's already been shared. Let's see what they're actually implementing in all these locations. These are the fines you can get in Toronto and Ontario for coronavirus right now. Residents of Toronto are required to follow the newly implemented social distancing bylaw. The bylaw requires any two people who don't live together to keep two meters of distance between them and a park or public square. Anyone who fails to comply with the new bylaw can receive a maximum set fine of $1,000. Police officers across Ontario are enforcing provincial orders, banning organized social gatherings of more than five people, as well as bans on using closed playgrounds in other parks. The city is also issuing fines to non-essential businesses that remain open despite provincial orders to shut down. In London, going golfing on that you a $750 fine. Doesn't matter if the course is closed and therefore empty, and therefore no one is getting infected. $750. The city of Laredo, Texas, has mandated that people wear masks in public or face a $1,000 fine. The fines for not complying with social distancing rules in Vancouver is also $1,000. For businesses, it's $50,000. 59 charges have already been laid in Hamilton, including against seven businesses. Hamilton has 331 cases and 16 deaths, while its population is half a million. Let's see if these various new restrictions are bearing any fruit. First, UK arrest for failing to self-isolate over the coronavirus as man at 26 is held on the Isle of Man. The 26-year-old male faces a 10,000-pound fine and three months in jail after arriving on the Isle of Man, then refusing to go into a 14-day quarantine. The Quebec City Police arrest a coronavirus patient for defying her quarantine. She tested positive, but was still going around town. A coronavirus patient is now under 24-7 armed guard after refusing to self-isolate. The governor of the state of Kentucky had to make this decision because the person just would not stay indoors. Now, I kind of get it when it's somebody who's actually been confirmed to have the virus, but it's happening to just random people, too. In the UK, a woman was wrongly charged 660 pounds under a new coronavirus law. Two women in Texas were arrested for offering home beauty and salon services out of their house. They were in fact discovered by undercover cops who posed as customers. Six people were shot at a California house party that violated the stay-at-home order. The victims were five adults and one juvenile. A driver in training was fined $1,600 for non-essential travel during the coronavirus lockdown. It really does seem like they're going after everybody. But actually, it's, it's not everybody. The police let a wedding with 30 guests and a drummer go ahead in Melbourne, despite a ban on ceremonies with more than five guests, just telling them to keep 1.5 meters apart. Check out this wedding picture, guys. I mean... You think there might be something about this as to why they're not enforcing the rules equally? You think it's just random chance, or do you think something might be going on here? I... I don't know. A French official says the quarantine should not be enforced in migrant areas to avoid riots. It's not a priority to enforce closings in certain neighborhoods. Is that all it takes? 
In order for us to get our rights back, all we have to do is riot? Really? Is that it? Or maybe it's just riot while not being white. There are two headlines, though, that are absolutely insane. We should blow up the bridges. <laughs> Coronavirus leads to class warfare in Hamptons. I guess they don't want people coming to town. And check out this Nazi shit. Montana County demands people wear government-issued armbands to do business. Wow. You literally have to have your papers, not just your papers, but your Nazi armband, in order to buy and sell in this area. This flyer was given to all the businesses in the area. Did you see a pink wristband in Valley County? What does it mean? Anyone who is from out of town or out of Valley County who has a pink wristband has been here 14 days or more, and no longer needs to do the strict self-quarantine. They may enter your business. Anyone who is from out of town or out of Valley County, staying here or working here, and has not completed the 14-day quarantine, is required by the Valley County Health Officer Order to use curbside delivery only. They are not to enter your business to shop. Someone working on each shift must talk to the people and insist that they follow the orders. If, after explaining the requirements, the person doesn't comply, you are to call law enforcement. This is probably the most draconian thing to come out of this so far. Of course, the internet knows exactly how to strike back against this kind of nonsense. Like when New York City's mayor put this up. How do you report places that aren't enforcing social distancing? It's simple. Just snap a photo and text it to 311-692. Well, no one's surprised that this happened, right? De Blasio's social distancing tip line was flooded with penis photos and Hitler memes. <laughs> Thank you, 4chan. Mayor Bill de Blasio's critics let him know how they really felt about him, ordering New Yorkers to snitch on each other for violating social distancing rules. By flooding his new tip line with crank complaints including dick pics and people flipping the bird. Photos of extended middle fingers, the mayor dropping the Staten Island groundhog, and news coverage of him going to the gym have all been texted to a special tip line that de Blasio announced Saturday. <laughs> Fuck you, replied Morden L. Schmidt 1, along with a meme showing Adolf Hitler and the words, To those turning in your neighbors and local businesses, you did the right thing. <laughs> Other profane messages included a photo of a bowl of gummy candies in the shape of male genitalia and a sign saying, Eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> <Look at this. laughs> he looked at me and coofed in my direction. The caller said, according to a photo of the 311 operator's computer screen. Koof is a newly coined term for coughing while infected with the coronavirus. <laughs> I love it when, like, old style media tries to report on memes. It's been hilarious shit for years, man. Even going back to the whole exploding van, lulls is a corruption of LOL kind of stuff that we saw from Fox News in like 2007 or whatever it was. And yes, at this point, they actually are mask-off tyrants. Michigan governor considers extending the coronavirus restrictions because of the protesters. Not for any other reason. Not because Michigan, for some reason, needs it. Not for any kind of health or economic reason or whatever. Just because people protested. This is very much like a, a one more word from you, mister, and you're grounded for another three months kind of deal. And I'm not at all surprised because the Democratic governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, actually looks like a Karen. It's that kind of irresponsible action that puts us in this situation where we might have to actually think about extending stay-home orders, which is supposedly what they were protesting. Thanks, Mom. I hate it. And some people really are crying out for the government to be their parent, to swoop in and save them and coddle them and restrict them the way that a parent would. To beat this coronavirus, we must sacrifice our freedoms. South Korea, China, Singapore, and Taiwan have demonstrated that draconian methods, like tracking people with technology, work. Have they? Because we all know that China's cooking the numbers. And we've seen a natural decline in the acceleration of cases all over the world, whether or not they actually used draconian methods. This disease is so infectious, governments must unleash the Big Brother bazooka by deploying technology. This is the only way to fully halt the contagion. Testing must be universal and mandatory. Smartphones and other devices can help authorities monitor people's movements in order to enforce social distancing and prevent them from gathering. Data on the movements of those who are quarantined or known to be infected can help authorities track down who's been exposed. 
Infected Koreans are separated from their family and friends and put into government isolation shelters. Their phone and credit card data is used by health authorities to trace their movements and contacts. Every contact or person in the vicinity of their journeys is sent a warning on their phones and told they must quarantine themselves at home, where they are monitored by a GPS app. If they leave home, they face huge fines. The Chinese require anyone who's tested positive is isolated or has been exposed to victims to download software on their smartphones that allows police to access a color code that defines their health status and whether they should be in quarantine or free to use public spaces. These measures are not overkill. Canadians are mostly compliant, but many need more discipline. We've all seen reckless people on beaches and parks, oblivious to the well-being of others. Many are refusing to stay home, keep their distance from others, or are gathering privately. All of these people are potential spreaders, or as one headline labeled them, COVIDiots. Laws with fines and punishments already exist but aren't working, nor is public shaming. Tracking Canadians using technology will keep everyone honest. Skittishness about privacy or freedom are valid concerns, but the status quo dictates that extraordinary action must be undertaken. This also means truly sealing our borders until the crisis is over. The fact is that freedom is the right to swing your arm, but not to hit anyone with it. And privacy is a cherished privilege, but only if it causes no harm. This is the socialist paradise. This is what every young leftist has been screaming about wanting for the past decade. Capitalism has been broken, at least temporarily, replaced by state control of everything. Freedoms are curtailed for supposedly the greater good. Earning your own money has been replaced with government handouts. The newly 18-year-old socialists were promised paradise, but the realities of this level of government control are actually quite bleak. The left has been saying for a while now that they could actually create utopia on Earth as long as the average person simply surrendered their basic rights to government control and accepted the nationalization of everything. And here we are. Governments around the world, both autocratic and democratic, have begun to seize power and issue authoritarian crackdowns. Who knows how many of them will actually give up all of this emergency authority once the coronavirus crisis has run its course. Our cities now have an extra police presence, sometimes even an extra military presence in them. That force will be wielded by the same people that have closed our schools, our businesses, our churches, our public spaces, our gyms, our libraries, and our clubs. We still don't know just how far they're willing to go in using that military force to try to keep people off the streets. But we are being asked by both the state and, frankly, the dumber segments of our population to simply accept it and to hope that the people in charge come good on their promise to give our civil liberties back. It's not all bad. It is true that there are definitely some civil servants out there who are acting out of a genuine, urgent need to keep people safe right now during a crisis. But there's just as many hidden authoritarians that are salivating at the prospect of keeping people in their place. Don't let them do it. Protest. And protest doesn't mean go out there and get into violent brawls with the cops or throw a brick at them or something because then it becomes a riot. Then you've actually broken the law and done something wrong. Real protesting means that you're willing to get arrested. It means that you're potentially willing to have a record. Say what you want about Bernie Sanders, but those old pictures of him being dragged away by the cops because he was peacefully protesting in what he believed? That is the kind of thing that you have to do right now if protest is your aim. You have to be willing to spend a night or two in jail, but as long as you don't forfeit the high ground, it will probably be better for you in the end. A couple months ago on this channel, I was talking about how it was probably a good idea to shut things down. And I actually still agree with that, because the whole point of shutting society down, at least temporarily, and using federal power to, uh, to grant that authority, it's not because there's a coronavirus pandemic. It's because there's a pandemic of an unknown virus that we have no idea how to combat. But now we, we do, at least somewhat. We have some ideas. We know a little bit more about it. Shutting things down was meant to buy us time so that we could actually study this virus, learn what was going on with it, and figure out what to do about it. We are largely at that stage. We don't have a vaccine yet, but we do have some effective treatments. Our manufacturing capacity has ramped up again, such that the shortages of masks and ventilators, as well as stuff like food and toilet paper, has largely gone away. Now is the time to open back up, because we figured out what to do about it and now we can do it, and there is no good reason to stay indoors anymore. Even if there is this, this dreaded second wave, dealing with the second wave is better than giving up our rights. 
Because if those rights are actually gone, they're gone for everyone, not just people who are infected, and they could be gone for a generation. We are actually living in the socialist paradise. It is no wonder that not only does nobody like it, but that governments around the world are turning into, at various speeds, the exact type of thing that we need to prevent.